Hi everyone, welcome to I'm Path Gaming. So we are back with Raji. Mayura, you have done all you could. Rest now and be safe. We are in a new part of the game now and the music has changed with the level. So let's see what the awaits ahead. Mahabala Sura has brought war upon the mystics, his own people. It was inevitable. He tried to lead them, but, but his arrogance took him too far. Raji must be careful. He may still have supporters amongst them. As you say, it is war. And in war, all things are possible. Beware, Raji. These creatures are bred for quickness and strength. They are weapons of war. In another circumstance, that might please you, Durga, goddess of war. But not these. These are demons. This new enemy has new attack patterns. So I guess we are going to see more of these enemies and more variety in this level. I do not trust these mystics, or their chief. Mahabalasura was one of them once. They have been separated from humanity for far too long. The mystics are a part of Lord Shiva's balance in the world. The humans are weakened, and the demons strong. A balance must be restored. So the game keeps surprising me with different levels and, and the different variety of areas to fight. Surely now Lord Shiva must act? Look at the damage Mahabalasura has caused and may yet cause. Brother Gulu was the one to be taken. It looks like these people got turned into stones. That is a demon battle totem, a foul thing, which summons a multitude of creatures. Raji must beware.
I think that Sword and Shield is better to fight these new enemies because they are fast and to block them I can use the shield. You will not stand against me! will not be separated. He stays with me. We will face together whatever is to come. You spoke of Lord Shiva acting. This is his shrine. It is no coincidence that Raji finds herself here. Time will tell. So this area was really tough to fight because there was a lot of waves of enemies that were coming and I died like two or three times before finally managing to defeat all of them. At the start of the game, we were in the shrine of Goddess Durga. Then we came to a new uh, city, Hiranyanagari, which was the city of Lord Vishnu. And now we are in the shrine of Lord Shiva. So that is interesting. The statue in front is called Shivling that a lot of Hindus worship. Lord Shiva, Mahadev, was it you who summoned me to this place? How may I stop this war and save my brother? Mahadev, I will find my way. So we got a new ability. We can freeze enemies while attacking them. <laughs> So the freezing ability will be good against fighting those fast snake-like enemies.
the other giant, her brother. He has spent much time with Mahabalasura. I cannot see this plan for the body. He is a twisted creature. He will use gold. To defeat Raji, to use her love against her. She must be careful. One of the tricky things about uh, developing something like this, even though we know that the graphics are decent, and still they manage to create such a beauty in this game. Each level has something unique to offer. The levels and the environments are designed really gracefully. So we are getting a lot of power-ups. It's like the end is near and we are going to fight the final boss. Decide the fate of many a man. Baba, what do our ancestors' words mean? I'm going to play all of these stories in these paintings, and if you want to skip, you can skip to the. It is the birth of Piplad, an aspect of Lord Shiva. When Piplar was just a young boy, his father Dadichi gave his own bones and sacrifice to the Devas to defeat the Asuras. Piplar asked the Devas why his family should suffer such bad fortune. And they told him it was simply due to the alignment of the planet. Piplar was furious at this fate and cursed Shani of the Ringed Planet, whose celestial home started to fall from the sky. The Devas interceded, pleading for mercy on Shani, for Piplar to lift the curse. Piplar agreed on the condition that Shani's position would no longer bring trouble on anyone of less than 16 years old. Ah, this is the marriage of Shiva to Sati, which angered Sati's father Daksha greatly. Daksha snubbed the girl and insulted Shiva in public. Sati was unable to bear it and threw herself into the sacrificial fire. Shiva fell into a great rage and pulled a lock of hair from his brow, lashing the ground with it. And there sprang up Virabhadra, fierce warrior of Shiva, who destroyed Daksha and extinguished his fire. Even, even I could not stop him. The birth of Ashwatthama, 
gifted to his father Drona after many many years of penance, born with a magical gem in his forehead that made him a mighty warrior. After Drona was killed through trickery, Ashwatthama issued a challenge to Arjuna. Both warriors used mantras to create mighty world-destroying weapons. Arjuna was wise and withheld his weapon, but, but Ashwatthama did not. Instead, directing it at Uttara, Arjuna's daughter-in-law, utterly destroying the lineage of the Pandavas. For that action, Krishna cursed Ashwatthama and cut the gem from his forehead. For thousands of years, he roamed the forests of the world with blood and pus oozing from his injury. It is rumored he walks there still.